Hi there, and welcome to the Homestead Education Podcast. Do you have a homestead, farm, or just dream of a rural life? This is a show to help you and your kids grow your own food and grow as a person. I'm your host, Cody Hanner. I'm a homesteader, homeschool mama six, and small town enthusiast. I was raised by an old school rancher and blessed by the grace of God to have been exposed to so much of what rural life has to offer. Join me every week to talk about homesteading, homeschooling, and growth with a homestead education. Hi, welcome back. I just want to remind you that you can get all of my homestead science books on my website for a new way of teaching agriculture to today's youth and aspiring homesteaders by focusing on small-scale farming and self-sufficiency. If you're a school or co-op and need invoicing, please feel free to reach out to me directly. So we have had a fun week on the homestead. In case you missed last week's YouTube, we have another calf. On Thanksgiving, our dairy cow Bailey calved a little heifer. Um, And then last week, one of our Angus heifers calved. Um, We bought these two heifers. 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 Um, They're kind of rude. So, I mean, I didn't say that. Anyways, um, uh, we bought them two years ago. right after they were weaned and we're just now getting our first calves out of them. And it turned out to be perfect timing because this little bull calf can be sold as a 4-H show steer, or if our son wants to show him in two years, he can. Um, unfortunately our heifer didn't want to let him nurse. Uh, so we were faced with a super fun task of restraining her without our cattle shoot system, because that's all hooked into our pig system right now from fair last year. Um, so we could run all of like the kids' pigs through the chutes. And so that all has hot wire hooked into it. And like, it, I mean, we would have to take down our whole system to be able to run this uh, heifer through to get her to nurse. So we had to do it in the calving barn, which was not set up for this at all because we thought we had another month before these cows were due. And then everybody started calving and we realized that we did not have another month. So, um, We had ourselves a little rodeo, but I will uh, link the YouTube video in the show notes and you can check it out. I was able to video most of it. It was me, my husband, and um, one of our sons, Wyatt. Um, So we have two Wyatts. I don't know that a lot of people know that, but we have two Wyatts because we are a yours, mine, and ours family. So my husband has a Wyatt and I had a Wyatt. And um, so the Wyatt that's in the video um, sometimes is referred to as a little Wyatt, but at this point, he, I think he's taller than big Wyatt. Um, a lot of times we call them by their middle names. So I call him Kate in this video a lot. So if that confuses you out there, that's what's going on. Um, anyways, like I said, I'll link it in the show notes. Um, and yeah, like I said, I, I was able to video most of it. There's a few times I just had to stop videoing and like keep my husband from getting ran over by an angry heifer. So, that's, you know, it's kind of some fun times there. Anyways, um, with our uh, dairy cow calving, I've had so much fun having raw milk in the house. Again, we've been making butter. We've just been drinking raw milk. Um, oh, it tastes so much better. Um But for those of you who are unfamiliar with raw milk, be sure and check out my blog this week on raw milk home dairying. It's super informative about like the history and the health of raw milk. Um, I'm also putting together a YouTube video for Friday on some home dairying basics um, and linking some of my favorite products to uh, make sure that you guys have everything you need if you're getting started in home dairying. So really excited for that. Um, Today's episode... I'm going to be talking about the survival co-op class I taught this year. We had our finale last week, and I feel like I really reached these kids. Plus, they had an absolute blast. Now, first off, I teach in a very rural and rugged community. Like, I don't know, like literally we're the county where like the Ruby Ridge standoff happened with the government and stuff. Like, this is a rural and rugged county. Um, like these kids are tough and have more grit than most adults that I know, like known in my life. And I seriously have to laugh every time I'm needing to cut something in class. And one of them just like busts out their pocket knife. I mean, my kids always have pocket knives, but it's really like I'm teaching in like a church basement with a group of kids and all the kids are like, need a knife. (laughs) It just always cracks me up. Um, kind of reminds me of like my college ag classes, but with 10 year olds. So, you know, (laughs) um, However, they were still really surprised with some of the things that they didn't know or didn't feel comfortable handling independently. And most of these kids are like, you know, 
middle school age, I think the youngest were like 10 and then they went up to 15, 16 years old. And so they weren't little, but they were really surprised. And I think it just was super eye opening for them of the things that they should know, which I mean, like I said, with how rural our county is, I mean, our search and rescue is super busy all the time. My husband's on the fire department. He's always out on a search and rescue call because there are so many people out here, you know, hiking, hunting, huckleberry picking. I mean, it's, and snowstorms that come in, I mean, there's always someone coming up missing. And so it's a real thing in the area that we live in. But I mean, it could be a real thing for any family that spends any time in the woods. So um, sorry, so thirsty. Uh, I posted a ton about this on Instagram over the semester, mainly in my stories, because a lot of times there was like, you know, kids in the picture. So I would just like, you know, cover a little bit of their face and um, just post it for the day. Uh, there's a few reels and stuff you go check out, but everyone was really excited. And when I say everyone, like, you know, people on my Instagram, they were like, oh, I want to take this class. I wish this class was taught at our co-op. Um, Gia will have a curriculum that you use. So I decided that doing a podcast all about it would be really fun. So the first thing I did, like I made a list of the classes that I wanted to teach. No, I didn't use a curriculum, by the way. Um, I wrote this um, just out of my own life experiences, books I've read, people I've came across, what I've learned from my husband being on search and rescue. Um, so, I mean, there was stuff like I am not a master knot tire. Like I had to learn how to do knots to teach these kids. Uh, but I mean, we just had such a fun time with it. But what I did is I made a list of all the topics I wanted to teach. And I don't ever really shy away from teaching the hard stuff. So we had like a parent welcome meeting and I got up and I said, I want to teach survival. And everybody was super excited. And then I said, but we're going to be using real tools. We're going to be using fire. I plan on butchering quail. Yes, I'll get to that part um, where there's going to be knives. And um, I need your kids to be like on point, they need to be listening, following directions. And if they have a queasy stomach, like I didn't say they should not take the class. I said, take the class and just opt out on the days that we're going to be doing squeamish stuff. So I made sure that everybody had a list of what was going to happen so that the kids could opt out if they wanted to. And I had very little of that. The kids were really excited, but I wanted to put that out there so that if there was a kid that was interested in the class, that they didn't have to be there for the days that just didn't work for them. But I mean, I encourage them all to be a part of it. And I'll get to some of that a little later. So the quail, I'm going to start off there. Because if you're thinking about teaching this class, and you want to do it like as extreme as I ended up doing it, um, I forgot to put my phone on do not disturb. And I'm this is probably more obnoxious than me actually getting a call, but I'm putting it on do not disturb now. So um, what I did with the quail is as soon as I knew how many kids were going to be in the class, I ordered a batch of quail eggs, which usually we already raising quail, but we kind of got out of it over this last year. Um, but I ordered a batch of quail eggs and I incubated them. And throughout the whole semester, we were brooding them. I took pictures every week for the kids. The kids got to see pictures of their quail, but knowing full well that they were going to be butchering them at the end of the semester, but they were so excited. And the reason I chose quail was because um, they're really easy to butcher and clean with your bare hands, which is something you could end up having to do in a survival situation or with very limited items. So I thought this would be best. Plus, um, you know, they mature in like six to eight weeks. So they were actually nine weeks old when we butchered them. So it was a really perfect age. In fact, they were already starting to lay and we ended up only butchering a handful in class. And so I'm actually going to get right back into quail. So I'm really excited for that part. But yeah, if you're wanting to get into this to the extent that we did, I would plan on um, either incubating and having quail ready to butcher or maybe um, ask around the community, see if somebody has quail you guys can buy. Um, they're usually about $10 a piece at butcher age. So I mean, you have to consider that. But that's still a consideration if you have a class that really wants to try this. Um, if not, I would consider, um, picking up a couple of chickens from the grocery store, whole chickens, thawing them out, letting the kids just kind of see how all the parts work and look. Um, it's okay to let them get their hands dirty, I guess, is what we would say. So my very first class was water sanitation. 
this one, I, I was so excited about this, but I nerd out about stuff like that. Cause I love science. So, um, we have a pond on our property. So I sent my husband, no, I sent my two boys up to collect water. And so they took mason jars and they go and they get water the night before. And I put it on the kitchen counter because we were going to teach, um, like different ways to sanitize the water. And one of the ways is with, um, chlorine tablets that I think it takes four to six hours for them to work. And so I had to make sure I dropped one of those in first thing in the morning before we went to class and I go out there and there are literally snails and like seaweed in this, not seaweed, but algae and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I'm taking this in for the kids to see. And I was like, no, this is perfect. So I want them to see that like any water, you know, can be sanitized. So the way I taught this particular class, I had ordered all the stuff in advance. I had the sanitizing tablets. I had life straws. Um, I got a meat thermometer so that we could test water temperature when boiling. And I ordered little tests that um, test for like our rapid test for bacteria. And my thought was, you know, the water from my pond is nasty. So I'm going to take that and we will test it beforehand and then we'll boil it and we have these sanitation tabs and we'll do a couple different things like that and then we'll test it again and we'll see if it um, dealt with the bacteria. So we get to class, we run these tests, they're all like, you know, little pipettes and stuff and lo and behold, there was no bacteria in our water. So, I mean, good to know because it is spring water, um, comes right out of the mountain into our pond. Um, So... I mean, I guess we're lucky there, but it really didn't like prove my point, but there were still snails and stuff in the water and the kids were like, you know, do we get to try it? So, um, we did the couple of different things to sanitize it. We did the sanitizing tablets and we did test that water. And of course it still showed up clean. Um, we did the boiling. So, because basically bacteria will die at, I believe 180 something degrees. And if you're boiling water, it's hitting 212. So that's how you know that it's high enough to have that water sanitized. So we went through the steps of doing that. And then the kids used, we had a couple different life straws that we would just wipe off. Um, of course, half these kids are related and stuff. So they all, I have videos of them all drinking the snail water and they were like super proud of themselves. <laughs> um, the next class we did not tying. I ordered off of Amazon just this... Um, it was like a box and it had like a bunch of different colors of paracord in it, the stuff to like make paracord bracelets. But it was at like a set that I think I spent $12 on it. And I got like 20 different colors of paracord, which was great for my class of 16. I ordered the book, um, the knot tying Bible, I think is what it was called. And my husband and I mastered a few knots and we took it into class and the kids had a blast with it. So they learned all the knots that we taught. And then one of the kids knew how to make paracord bracelets, like just, you know, bam, he knew how to do it. And so after they mastered all the knots, the kids spent the rest of the day making themselves paracord bracelets. Um, And, you know, so it just, they jumped right in and they wanted to be a part of it and had a really good time. Uh, the next class was bear safety. Now we live in a place where there's grizzly bears. So again, like how I was saying, these kids spend a lot of time outside. Um, I knew that the uh, bear safety was going to be the bet, you know, a really good one to have. So uh, I actually, rather than teach that one myself, I called the local fish and game department and they sent a bear specialist that set up like an entire, like their booth for when they do shows. I mean, there was mounted bears and bear hides and claws. And I mean, they had the whole thing and they did like an hour and a half long presentation with these kids. All the parents came. It was an absolute blast. Um, You know, there's definitely other ways of teaching it, but For this one in our area, I felt like the fish and game department was the best way to teach it. And I think with a lot of co-ops, your local department of fish and game would probably have somebody that would come and talk to you because yes, we deal with grizzlies, but I mean, in California there and you know, the Southwest there's mountain lions in the South, there's alligators and snapping turtles. And I mean, you pretty much have something everywhere that, um, you need to learn some sort of wildlife safety. And I bet that the fish and game would be more than happy to come teach anybody those things. 
So the next class was paper maps versus GPS. So, you know, just like any kids in the digital age, I go in, I'm like, what do you do if you're lost? And they're like, you check your GPS. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that doesn't always work. I mean, come on, guys. We live in a really rural area. How, I mean, just driving to grandma's house, do you lose service? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, then how are you going to use your GPS? You know, what if you're lost and your, you know, battery dies? Like you need to know how to do, like to orienteer yourself, uh, you know, just wilderness navigation using a map. And they were all like, oh, we're good. We use X maps all the time, which on X is um, a hunting and hiking app that we use so much up here. And I mean, I've used it across the whole country um, when we're on our travels and stuff. So, I mean, it's it's, it's a pretty cool app, but um, you can mark all your waypoints and like, you know, where you saw a deer and that you can have whether or not it's public land or private land. I really, really enjoy the app. But anyways, the kids all know it. Um, you know, X maps are up here and they're like, oh yeah, we use X maps. We know how to read maps. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, I'd gone to the forestry department that morning and picked up a map of our County and I put it up on a cork board and I handed everybody a push pin and I said, find your house. And not a single one of them could not even like the 16 year old. I mean, he like, he was like, oh, I'll show everybody up. Like he got up in line and then he turned to me and he's like, Miss Cody, can you just show me where your like highway 95 is? And then he's like, I can find it from there. And I'm like, see guys, like, I know that you all were like, I don't know, showing off to each other or boasting, but if you weren't using paper maps all the time, you, you can't just walk up and know where everything is. So that was a really big eye opener for the kids. Like they all stopped talking and were like, okay, teach me. So, you know, we took the map outside and we started looking at the topography of it and, you know, what are, what's the name of that mountain near us, that mountain near us. So which way should the map point? Um, we talked about how to navigate using the sun, how to navigate using the stars. Um, we had compasses, all the kids were outside with their compasses. We went over how to properly read a compass. I found a lot of this in a few different books that I have. One of them is uh, Survival Kids. That was a fun one that I could find some information and to do some activities with the kids. I have um, Navigating the Wilderness. It's another book that talks about how to do um, navigation. Plus just, like I said, my years in the woods, I felt pretty comfortable teaching, but I wanted to make sure I was teaching them the right way. Um, the next two classes were actually um, Foraging and Herbal Remedies and the Survival Pack. I was out of town for those two classes, but I had... Um, one of my co-teachers teach it, and I've heard her talk about foraging. She's amazing, but um, even with that, she used um, one of my homestead science books along with a book that, or a card game that one of my friends made about foraging. Um, let's see, Suzanne Shires. Um, she has a card game on foraging, so we used she used that and. Um, my book, which Suzanne has a great book too, but the book I wrote is for teaching kids. So that's the one we used. And the kids had a really fun time with that. I've actually taught the foraging in my homestead science class at a uh, co-op before with the younger kids. And we had a blast. Like I have an app on my phone and I have a book of local um, edible foods. So we went out and we found, I mean, we were just in the grass at the church and the kids were finding flowers and grass and, you know, shrubs. And we were looking them up um, with my app. And then we were looking at the name and using the book to look them up and see if they were edible. And I mean, we had so much fun. And then we went in and we made um, dandelion infused butter, put it on a cracker. The kids had a really good time. They thought it was weird eating dandelions. Um, that was for my younger group, like the five to eight year olds, but it was still a really good time. Um, the survival pack, um, I again, wasn't there for that class either, but what I know that she did cover and what we wanted to cover was not only what you can have in a survival pack, um, like if you're planning on going into the woods, but what you should always have in like a small backpack for every hike you go on. Um, just to make sure that you have like the bare necessities that you need if you do get separated from the group, like a small first aid kit, you know, fire starting supplies, uh, just some of those types of things. Um, the next one was Animal Tracks and Scat, and we used a card game for that one. Um, 
I meant to bring that in to like give the exact name and I didn't bring it in with me, but it's called Animal Tracks. I got it off Amazon and I can link it in the show notes. Uh, kids had a lot of fun with that one, of course. Um, the next one was Wilderness First Aid. Now, my husband being on the fire department, having taken a couple of Wilderness First Aid classes, he came in and he taught the kids all the situations, um, how to get help if you need it. You know, if you're out with a parent, your parent falls and hurts themselves, what you should do. We went over some basic first aid. We brought in um, a whole bunch of different colored rolls of vet wrap. And the kids were um, wrapping slings for each other. Um, Just really like hands on with this type of class. The next class was uh, fire starting and safety. So I went over the proper ways to start a fire in the woods. um, If you need it, when you need it, Um, you know, how to send up a smoke signal, how to clear safe um, defensible space around your fire that you only need a small warming fire. You don't need to like, you know, start a bonfire. Uh, I showed how to start a fire using a matches lighter and an Uber leading. um, What do we call it? Flint and steel, which Uber leading is a company here locally. Um, I mean, I say locally, they're in Bonners Ferry, but they sell all over and they have a lot of fire starting and survival type gear. So I brought it in thinking how fun, you know, this is, from a local company and one of the kids in the class goes my dad works there I'll show everybody how to work it so that was awesome that he got to jump in and be able to teach his class uh so then our last class was the butchering class and I brought the quail in I told all the kids I'd like you to watch us butcher one quail after that if you don't want to watch anymore if you don't want to try that's fine, but I will need people to, uh, you know, clean the quail, to cook the quail. And so everybody kind of picked their jobs. And actually the preschool class popped over to see the live quail. And because, you know, most of the families are already there, it was decided the preschoolers were going to stay and watch butchering as well. So that was really fun. Um, The kids all felt really comfortable with it. Nobody had any issues. There was one little girl that um, I know her family pretty well, but at first she's like, ew, that head's still moving and like hiding her face in her dad's shirt. And next thing I know, she wanted to be the one who cut off the head. So, um, but, and then another family, they raise uh, reptiles for um, educational like classes and stuff. And so they came in and they were taking all the spare parts from the butchering of the quail to take them home and feed into their reptiles. That was just really fun. Like it made it where everybody was gaining something from this. Um, we butchered about six quail as a group and then, um, we were able to do it. We did it using scissors and then we did it using our bare hands so that you could see that you could, you know, pop their heads off, break the joints, uh, rip the skin open with your fingers, which is something that you would actually be doing in a survival situation. Um, then we took them in, the kids cleaned them out. And then, Um, A couple of the girls, I brought in some lard and um, salt and pepper, and they fried them up in the skillet right there, which, you know, anything like that really should like set for a day. Like if you were butchering at home, I'd put them in the fridge for a day before I ate them. But we did it, you know, straight from butcher to skillet. And they turned out really good, a little on the chewy side because they didn't get to set overnight. But, oh, man, we chopped it all up and, like, the whole co-op was coming down and trying bites. I just feel like overall this group um, really gained something from this. And it gave me a lot of the talking points that I needed to be able to put together um, this next part, which is I had so many families and co-ops reach out to me over the semester when I was posting about this. Um. I decided to write a survival basics mini course and it works with families, co-ops, outdoor schools. It's uh, 15 lessons. So it could be one time a week. It could be kind of back to back and just learn something. Um, The great thing about this course is that, you know, so many teachers um, and parents already know how to teach this stuff, but having it in one place makes such a difference. I mean, I know even myself, like I'd get into class sometimes and be like, um, yeah, I didn't like put anything together. So let's figure this out. Um, it just really helps being able to have it all in one place with minimal preparation. 
Now, like all my other courses, though, I don't shy away from the hard topics. Um, I encourage kids to use real tools and experience hard situations that might be outside of their comfort zone. So keep that in mind if you're interested in this course. Um, But these are life skills that build character and make for great dinnertime conversations. You're talking to your kids about real life things instead of video games. And it's especially fun conversations if you're wanting to freak out the in-laws because, you know, they all question our homestead lives. (laughs) Um, This course is coming out this week. So if you listen to this, you know, right when it is um, launched, you may have a couple days before the course is available. If you're listening to this later, it's probably already out there. Um, it'll be available for digital download. It's going to have a full resource library with videos, links to books, my favorite teaching aids. I plan on keeping it super affordable and it's going to be versatile for many age groups. So head over to the homesteadeducation.com forward slash for survival to learn more. Um, I hope you guys learned something today and gained something from this and can't wait to talk to everybody next week. Did you enjoy today's episode? If so, please head over to your favorite podcast player and leave a comment and review. This helps me to know what you're enjoying and helps others find an episode that can help them. Thank you for joining me today at the Homestead Education, and I hope that I have given you something to think about this week. To help others find me, please comment and leave a review on your favorite podcast player. You can also follow me on Facebook at The Homestead Education and Instagram at homestead underscore education. Do you have questions that you would like answered or just want to say hi? Please email me at hello at thehomesteadeducation.com. Until next time, keep growing.